Good morning, FOMO fam. Let's take a look at the charts because I saw another indicator that points out where Bitcoin might be heading. And I say might because we are not sure, but the more indicators, the better, of course. Collect your information, do your research based on that and handle based on that, of course. So I hope I can help you a little bit with it. Welcome to the FOMO factory. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Turn on the bell notification so you won't miss out on anything. Like the video, smack it into YouTube's algorithm. Thanks for 6.2 thousand subscribers, by the way. And let's dive right into it. I want to take a look at the Into the Cryptoverse dashboard made by Benjamin, Benjamin Cohen. Shout out to him. This has been helping me so, so, so much throughout my crypto journey. So I bought this description, which is pretty expensive, but I love to share this uh, with you guys. So you have the same information as I have. Um, I'm dropping a video uh, this afternoon about when to buy the coins uh, that crypto banter tell us to buy, basically, right? They don't tell us to buy, uh, you know, they kind of do. So um, that's for the crypto portfolio giveaway. So make sure to check that out. Um, I think I suck at time zones, but I think 14 p.m. UTC. First, let's take a look at Bitcoin, because like I said, I saw another indicator um, and I want to take a look at that. First, the market itself. The market itself um, or the chart itself, look at this. This is what I uh, noticed as well, which is pretty interesting. Bitcoin has been in this well, big ass rising wedge, basically, if you can call it that since 2017, right? This is the range where it's been in. In this, bear mar in this bull market, we went to the top of it. In the last bull market, we went to the top of it. Well, we all kind of expect that the next bull run is around the end of 2025, where it should peak. If we go to the top right then, Bitcoin would be sitting at around end of 2025, which is here, around $400,000. So um, it sounds weird, but... If it doesn't happen, then this complete history is uh, changing, right? So it would be weird if it doesn't happen, basically. Um, but, you know, everything can happen in crypto. Everything changes. Every time is different. Uh, like, not this time is different. Every time is different, right? So will it happen? I don't know, but just something to take a look at. If we uh, look at where we are right now, we are now at the bottom side of this range. And this is where the panic comes, right? This is where people panic a lot, like, oh, shit, we're at the bottom. We're going to break this. We're going down. But then again, um, we were at the bottom right here as well. Right, We were at the bottom right here as well for a long time, since the beginning of December 2018. And we really got out of it in around March, April 2019. So, <coughs> sorry, I'm a bit sick still. <coughs> we were there for like, give or take half a year, right? We went below it here in 2020. This was the COVID crash, but we came above it again, right? We are now holding it pretty good. Um, so this goes against the indicator that I'm about to show you because um, I hope this holds, right? And we also have this horizontal line right here. So yeah, I must say that at this moment, 16.2, give or take, is a very strong level. And if we zoom in completely to see where it's sitting... <clears throat> It's if we were to fall down right now, then the horizontal line is coming in at, depending on how I draw it exactly, but uh, yeah, 16.2. And this rising wedge right here is 16. Yeah, give or take the same, right? And yeah, we could go below it. Like I said, fake outs happen all the time, right? I hope we hold it. If we close below it, right, and we really go below it, that would be the first time in um yeah ever so uh but it doesn't mean that it can't happen right also uh if we look at this diagonal line right here that we've been in since october uh, november 2021 if you put it off lock i can draw it like this right i can draw it like this and then you could say okay we broke it right but if we put it off lock then a lot of things don't make sense on this chart anymore right if we put it on lock then my whole chart is like a uh, micro cap. But if we put it on lock, you'll see that we still have a long way to go. And it's it could be exciting because we have to hold this diagonal line right here, right? But we also have this diagonal line coming. So in that case, could Bitcoin do something like this? And then in around April, you know, make or break time, right? 
And yeah, it could be that before that, we could also break to the downside or to the upside. But at least April, you know, that's the latest decision time. So I'm very curious to see what's going to happen right there. Um, I'm not telling you like this is going to happen because it could go both ways because, you know, we don't know. Um, I'm not claiming to know, but this is actually pretty interesting to see. However, um, what I just said would indicate that Bitcoin would not really go lower than 16.2k if it wants to hold that trend, right? The chart that I looked at um, is pretty interesting as well because this is, um, let me take a look, the moving averages. And the moving averages are always pretty interesting, right? We have the 20 weekly moving average, for example. Uh, here we go. We never close really below it, right? Um, and we close below it and we stay below this for a long, long time. We got rejected. Oh, we never closed below. We did close below it. Uh, that was the 200 weekly moving average from what I think. Yeah, we closed below the 200 weekly moving average. So if we want to go back up uh, above that again, we have to, you know, close above 24.5K. Um, but what's kind of interesting is that if you take a look at all these moving averages since the bear market started, so since here, right? We, if you, if you line them up, right? If you line them up, what do you notice? I'm gonna show you something pretty interesting right here. Look, Bitcoin, the, this, this, this right here is the Bitcoin price, right? This thing. And these are all the moving averages. Bitcoin always hold its moving averages like for example this moving average right here we hold it pretty good but once we broke it we came all the way back down to the next moving average right then we hold this moving average right here but then when we broke that we also broke the next one and now we are holding up uh we were holding up between the 300 simple moving average and the 200 simple moving average this one and this one right and we were bouncing in that range but we broke the 300 weekly moving average as well and that's now also resistance as you can see now what's pretty interesting the next moving average is the 350 weekly moving average which we are also holding right now as you can see right but if we continue this trend we could break this and go, uh, come to the next moving average, which is the 400, we uh, 400 weekly moving average, which has a price of 13.95K or AKA 14K, right? So um, if we have to continue this trend, then that 14K that we have been talking about on this channel for a long time makes complete sense, right? Because... We break a moving average, we go to the next one. We break it, here we broke two, but we go to the next one. Here we break it, we go to the next one. If we break it, we go to the next one, which is exactly, you know, at this moment, 14K. Moving averages are now moving up, right? So the longer it takes, the higher the moving average is, because now it is 13.95K. Uh, but back in um, October, for example, last year, it was 13.3K, right? It's now the beginning of January, the beginning of December. It was 13.7K. Uh, uh, so it went up for $200 per month, <laughs> right? But that's quite interesting that 14K makes a lot of sense all of a sudden, right? And that's a level that I've been talking about a lot. 13.86, it's my what I've drawn, but you know, to round it up, 14K is a level that I definitely have to keep my eyes on because... It's very simple. If I look at the monthly chart, um, you know, <laughs> we are now sitting at nothing. No, no support really, right? The first big support is this. It's big support, which is 14K. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, so it makes a lot of sense that if we go down, that 14K is the level, right? That's from the moment where we are sitting right now, 17% um, down on Bitcoin, right? You have to know that when something like that happens, what happens to altcoins? Well, for example, in uh, July, we saw a 44% monthly drawdown for Bitcoin in June, sorry, the beginning of June, right? What happened to altcoins back then? Um, May... 
June. Altcoins went down just 30%. So that wasn't that bad, right? But that was probably, let me take a look. Bitcoin dominance went up by then. Hmm, I have to figure that out. That doesn't make sense. But people were m more selling Bitcoin than altcoins anyway. So um, when it comes to that, you have to realize that, yeah, um, that could, if, if that 14K Bitcoin happens, <clears throat> uh, what was it? Again, uh, sorry, I'm not awake and I'm so sick. <laughs> uh, 17, 18%. Well, let's say that's a 20% draw uh, down for altcoins. You know, 20% down for altcoins. Yeah, could definitely happen. And if you look at uh, where that might take altcoins, 20%, slightly more than 20% maybe, will take it to this support level right here. 22% at least on the total three, right? And that's very important because I said 20% on altcoins. That's not completely true. Um, it's worse than that because... If the total three goes down 22%, uh, I said this in a video before, I have it somewhere. Yeah, I calculated it. On the 7th of November, for example, the total three went down 24%. Right? It's almost the same right here. But what did big altcoins do? Because this includes stable coins. These don't go down, right? So really altcoins go down more to compensate for that. So Link went down. 39%, Phantom as well, Moonbeam 32, S Fund 37, Uniswap, Rune, Trader Joe, all 40% down. Average move on altcoins is 37% down when uh, this went, you know, 24% down. So if this goes down by around 20%, right, then altcoins go down 30%. So keep that in mind. Um, if Bitcoin sees 40, 14K <coughs> and the altcoin dominance and the Bitcoin dominance doesn't go up really high, then I think that altcoins could see uh, another 30% down like at, at, at minimum, right? At minimum. Um, and, and, and that's for some altcoins, that's from here, it's quite a lot, right? I mean, it will put an avalanche at around $8. It will put a uh, dot, like, and then you have to realize, like, every altcoin has its own movements, of course, because if you put dot, like, 30% down, it ends up, like, here, right? Is there support anywhere right here? Not really, right? So you have to also take a look at the support levels of these altcoins, right? It will put a Solana, for example, 30% down. Like that's around, well, exactly this level again, $9, right? Um, and it could get way worse with some altcoins. And with some other altcoins, it could, you know, be not that bad, right? So... Um, that's what stood out to me when I looked at uh, this, like, okay, the trend is just breaking down on one moving average all the time. Um, so let me take a look, because how long did it take for this to happen? Like here, we went down on the 8th of May, the 8th of May, and we stayed there for a month, right? So that, you know, okay. Then we went down 14th of June. We really went down again the 4th of November. So it, it, it's not like, uh, and this one also right here, uh, 20 December, and we really went down uh, in May. So we could stay here like for a couple of months, right? And we are already here since November. So uh, November, December, January. We could stay here for a while. We could definitely stay here for a while, right? It could be that quarter. That That's kind of also my expectation, though. That's what I pointed out before on this channel. It's kind of my expectation that we um we 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 will we'll see the you know the last flush out what did i just see um, we could see the last flush out in q1 so somewhere january february uh march <laughs> sorry it's early um then get the bottom for Bitcoin and then finally move on and go into the accumulation phase and then a, 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 a bull market after the halving, right? Um, because the halving is in one and a half years. Bitcoin always goes up a year for, before the halving. 
another little bit, like 4x, give or take, is what it did so far, right? Doesn't have to happen this time, but so far it did, right? Um, if you look at the risk for Bitcoin so far, I mean, uh, we are not making lows yet, but it's getting to its lows again, uh, really. So we are now sitting at 0 0.14 and we are not where we were, you know, in previous bear markets. If you look at only the social metrics, you know, still have a long, long, long way to go down. So, you know, people are still too much engaged, uh, it's not necessarily the price that much, it's that people not giving up. And they might never, right? People are learning that Bitcoin is not going away. Um, and this is like also like Benjamin points out, I think a very good bottom indicator uh, because this is the supply and profit and loss. So the red line is the supply in loss. So, uh, in, in, in pro uh, shit. The red line is the supply in loss, yes. And the orange line is the supply in profit, right? So... Um, you'll see that in this bear market, the supply and loss that goes up, right? And when they cross, it means there is more Bitcoin, which is currently sitting at lower levels than what it's bought for, um, than when it's sold, right? So th th that's, that's quite interesting. And if you put these moving averages over it, I've showed you this before. What I'm looking at is the 30 days moving average, right? These crossed in every bear market. They all cross in every bear market, by the way, up till the 50 moving average. They cross right here, right? But it's a small cross. We want to see some more, you know, like here, for example, it's very obvious, like crosses all over the place, right? In this first bear market, though, we had a cross, cross back, done, right? But we now only had like this little thing right here. But what's most important is the 50 moving average. If you look at that, they you know, in this bear market, they just crossed. They just crossed, right? But if you look, for example, at the 90, they didn't cross in every bear market. Uh, so the 50 is, in my opinion, something we should take a look at. If you take a look at the 60, also, they just not crossed. So the last moving average that crossed in every bear market, which indicated the bottom because they crossed right around the bottom in every single bear market so far, is the 50-day moving average. And that didn't happen yet. They were coming closer together and the stupid Bitcoin had to go up again. And now they are far from each other. So stop buying Bitcoin, right? We need the bottom. <laughs> so we need these to cross at least if we want to take this indicator as a uh, bottom indicator because you know based off this indicator right and this is just one but based off this indicator the bottom is just not in as long as they don't cross yet right and they didn't right so i will show it a lot on this channel um but that's for me a very important bottom indicator uh to be honest um quite interesting roi after cycle peak like the green line is the bear market right now um if we do see a new low right, then this is the longest bear market so far, right? If we don't see a new low, then this was the low right here. Then it's the second longest bear market, right? Um, that goes for Bitcoin. For Ethereum, let me take a look. The red line is where we are right now. So by far the longest, but, you know, we haven't made lows like... We will never get here, in my opinion, uh, definitely not. But I think Ethereum is still way too strong. You can also check this on XRP, Litecoin and Cardano and etc. But Ethereum is still way too strong. Like Bitcoin is sitting at its lower regression band like for a long time, since May 2020, 2022, sorry, right? So more than half a year, Bitcoin is already sitting in the territory where it's sitting in every single bear market. Ethereum also always sits there, but now still haven't even touched it, right? It doesn't have to get to the lower band, like $500 or so, but at least get in this area right here of around $700 to $1,000, right? Right? And yeah, we were sitting at $700 to $1,000 um, for Ethereum. Definitely, we were sitting there, right? Uh, Ethereum was, what was the low? No, not, yeah, $900, right? But, you know, here was the regression band. It was lower, right? It was $850. Now it's sitting at 1000 So if we get to these levels for Ethereum right now, we will be sitting here. I think it's necessary for Ethereum to find a bottom as well. And a lot of altcoins are also linked to Ethereum. So, uh, But the main purpose of this video was me saying, like, I think that the bottom is 14K. 
around it, right? If we get to 14K, we probably get a wick below it or just not 14K, but that's the main resistance. That's what I'm expecting. Please don't 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 bash me and 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 and, and you know and 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 cancel me and and shadow ban me and all that if I'm wrong about that it's just my expectation it's what the charts are saying it's what I'm reading from the charts anyway right we could also break it and go to 12k right but for now 14k is the big uh, level to watch out for I want to leave it here thanks for watching like the video this afternoon tune in for the video about when to buy crypto banter altcoins see you guys